some stuff I ordered recently and long ago has arrived. And I finally found my proper knives to open packages so I can do away with this old rusty thing. This doesn't have a description on it, so it felt like it was cables of some kind. Yeah, I didn't want to cut through them. Meter probes. Yeah, these look like the exact kind I've bought several times before, and they worked out well. Don't need end caps on it. And one reason I wanted these is because I was digging out some old multimeters as I was unpacking, and some of them didn't have probes intact anymore. And that's a good fit. Back in business. I'll probably still keep this as a backup. I can still use that. It'll go into the pile of things that I probably throw away in five years from now. This says connector. It's quite possible. I've ordered a lot of different connector things over the past year, and I haven't opened them all yet. Oh, these are uh, various crimp connectors and capped on tape. And it looks like some of these got loose. I may have cut through the bag. I don't think I had anything specific in mind, just restocking because I've already got some like this of different sizes. But for anything like binding posts on a lab power supply or one of these other power supplies like the one I use for LEDs or motors. These are a good thing to have around in different sizes so that when the time comes you need them, they're already there. And I've got a thinner roll of this high temperature tolerant tape, but it's good to have it in different widths depending what you need to insulate or tape onto something else. Just restocking and expanding the collection. Uh, this says 3M Mini. So whatever it is, it's over in this side. I'll cut over here because it felt like a cable of some kind again, and it looks like a USB cable. I actually thought it was going to be maybe an audio cable. I've had a lot of those lately, but I now remember ordering this. Maybe 3M is three meters. I, it was supposed to be a long USB mini. There's the other end. And the idea of this, in my new workbench setup that I'm still considering a long-term work in progress, if I have an Arduino that I need to run and have connected up to the PC or whatever, it's going to be way that way. So this will let me plug in over there and have the board here. This mat is two feet wide. So that's, I don't know, approximately nine feet, give or take. And this table here is six feet wide, and the one next to me is five feet, I think, if not six. So that'll do nicely to get to a computer over there. If I ever get it cleaned up. Here we have fastener clip. This feels like a plastic case, so this is probably the safe area to cut. Because there's something else over here. And it would help if I actually cut it. Oh, right. These are car clips of various types. And one of those pry tools to get these clips out. And more clips. So I can't remember exactly how I chose what I did. But it looks like it's multiple different types, sizes, styles. I don't think I've seen a case like this yet in all the parts I've ordered that come in cases. So parts like this would be in certain places holding panels together in the car. You might have to pull some out and sometimes they break. So having the right tool can get them out easier and then you can have some replacements. And Finally, there's a couple of boxes from one shipment from Mauser, and it says to pull here. This is a weird box. A 
Well, that didn't help very much. Hopefully this one's easier to get into. I'll just get all this stuff out of the packaging, make it more presentable. We have some special quarter inch audio jacks that have two vertically stacked and they are PCB mount and some ICs. These are GPIO expanders. And I decided to get through hole so that I can put them in chip sockets, swap them out if I want to use them on a different project or something because I only have a few. So those have 16 IOs. It operates on the I squared C bus. They can both source and sync current. So I can drive an output high or low and have some current flowing through there as opposed to just a weak pull up, but then a strong pull down effect. So I got five of these as an experiment and if they work well, maybe I'll get more. And this package, it says this side up, it's a tray, so I better keep it the way they say. These are slide potentiometers, motorized. There they are. I got 10 of these and these are expensive, but what are you gonna do? So let me get some of this out of the way. Oh. And also these audio jacks. Let's look at these first. This looks like it would make a nice little temporary holding thing for parts. Maybe if I'm sorting out service mount things temporarily on a PCB build. I'm going to keep this. So these audio jacks, I can't remember. Maybe I could guess by the number of pins that these are stereo and there's two of them, but I only need mono. So for space saving considerations, as well as being able to PCB mount going two levels high, it's just two jacks. So if I have a bunch of these that I need on one PCB and I don't want to have the bottom row mounted on the PCB, but then the top row has to be hand wired down to other pins, this all just goes to the PCB and then I have a back panel ready to go with audio in and out multiple channels. So just for the one time at least, I thought I'd get a bunch of those. And tying into that are these fader slide potentiometers. So it's 10k and it has a little DC motor on it. So it's belt driven. The motor has power terminals here and I guess you could PWM that and the motor will move the belt and slide this potentiometer arm around. And between all of the connections on here, there's basically two resistor tracks. One of them is the actual 10k pot, but the other one can be used as sort of a feedback position guide. So let's say it was a 10k pot and you read it in and find it's 5k. Well that means the arm is about halfway along the track. So if you want to store the position, if you have a bunch of these all say on a mixing console, one's up here, One's down there, one's halfway, like so. You may not want, especially if you have 32 tracks, you may not want to try and go and set these between different projects. So you can read in the position when you're ready to save, and then somebody else can come along and do what they want and mess it all up. But then you go and hit a recall button, and these automatically slide into whatever position you wanted. So being over $20 each, this is the reason I ordered from Mauser this time instead of usually it's DigiKey that I order from, but DigiKey had these for even more expensive. And I could also get them on eBay or AliExpress, but again, it's no cost savings. And of course, spending that much money to get 10 of these, that's a big risk if something goes wrong with a shipment and you're waiting a month and they still haven't turned up. So considering all things, I could get it cheaper at Mauser and I could get it within a couple of days. Now all I need to do is learn to use them. Maybe I'll have to do some experiments with PWM control and reading in the 
position tracking potentiometer, figure out how to drive the motor correctly and at a slow enough speed to be safe. But these I can use in all kinds of things, whether it's a mixing console with audio levels, or you can also use these as inputs. Like if you have a MIDI controller of some sort, you can use this as an analog input that selects different things over MIDI when a microcontroller reads this and translates it into MIDI commands. So I thought it's worth the cost. Thanks to Patreon supporters and channel supporters for definitely helping make things like this possible. I'm hoping to have multiple projects using these expensive parts, not just one little thing and then put it in the corner and never use it again. So hopefully there will be a lot of interesting content coming up in the next couple of months. Stay tuned. And thanks for watching.